Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. If you are uh, my live audience, uh, bear with me. Google is being fired from the correct views. They have changed everything that I've ever liked about the site so badly on YouTube that I won't be doing Hangouts on uh, Google. I'm sure I will until I find an alternative. Uh, anybody leave me a, uh, a comment for an alternative to Google Hangout because the correct views is leaving! I hate it! It's terrible! <coughs> you have to be an idiot to want to like that site. My God! Alright guys, so uh, and even here, you didn't come here to hear me complain about Google. You showed up for the correct views. Uh, Sam I be reporting for the Media Speaks. Very Google angered. Not a happy customer. Alright guys, um, this is from TheVerge.com. Japan sets aside one billion for nuclear fallout storage. This has to be the most unprepared company in the history of the world, uh, GE, which is, of course, TEPCO. Listen to this. The total cost of Japan's Fukushima nuclear meltdown may never be known, but the country has at least put a number on how much it anticipates storing the radioactive debris war cost. Ashahi Shimbun reports that the 2014 Japanese budget includes a 100 billion yen provision, that's about $970 million, for the purchase and development of land for immediate storage facilities. It goes on once construction and operation costs are also included, the total anticipated expense is calculated to be 1 trillion yen, or just under $10 million. Though Tokyo Electric Power Company, the operator of the disaster-stricken plant, was expected to handle all decontamination work. Its financial struggles have delayed the cleanup, and the government is now stepping in with public funds to speed things up. Arnie Gunderson has gone on record for saying that he had um, ideas that would have greatly sped up all of the problems that they are having here. And you want to know what? They wouldn't listen. All they care about is the money and the image. Meanwhile, people in the United States are dying and having heart issues and infected thyroids, as are the people of Japan, because of what TEPCO did. And they're making it worse by trying to, to having spent so much time, I should say, trying to do it themselves. They are not prepared. Um, I am a keyboardist. I am a very good keyboardist. When my keyboard breaks, I do not fix my keyboard because I am not at all a technician. That is what's going on here. They're trying to do the cleanup. They are not cleanup specialists. And you could argue that they are also not very good at running nuclear facilities. Because they shouldn't be run at all. There are, n there are multiple candidate sites for the area in the area around the Fukushima plant, though the reports suggest that local authorities have been understandably reluctant to greenlight a project that would deliver up to 28 million cubic meters of radioactive debris into their jurisdiction. Anyone in Japan listening to me, if they want to move this into your, your prefecture, no. Your jurisdiction, no. Absolutely not. Do not let them do it. It needs to, I mean, if they need to move it from there, it needs to at least stay in Fukushima. I'm sorry. The main worry appears to be that the chosen site would turn into a permanent disposal area as opposed to the 30-year temporary storage facility that the government envisions. And exactly, they will. So don't let them move it there because that is exactly what they're going to do to you. In any case, a long-term storage solution needs to be found, with the AFP noting that the end of August there were already over 130,000 tons of contaminated debris collected, which are presently being stored in ill-suited facilities like waste incineration and treatment sewage plants. Which spells out for you, in screaming, vivid, vivid technicolor, exactly why you should never build these things. No, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to go on to another story here. This is the one I used the picture of off for the media speaks. Mail online. China become... Oh, by the way, and I'm sorry, I made myself a note here as I'm reading this. It should also be noted that China has banned 
all seafood imports from Japan. China is not exactly known for food safety. I almost forgot to get to that. Now this is from mailonline.co.uk, the Daily Mail. Philadelphia becomes the first U.S. city to ban 3D printed guns, but not before the blueprints for the weapon were downloaded more than 100,000 times. First of all, they've got no right to say what you can and cannot build with your own 3D printer. Second of all, people, I know for sure that the Pirate Bay, go to the PirateBay.com, you're going to have to download some kind of torrent, torrent reader. I use BitTorrent. Download BitTorrent. Download uh, your 3D printable gun from Pirate Bay. That is where you can get it. You can probably also get it from Kick-Ass Torrents. That's why you listen to the correct views now, isn't it? Um, Philadelphia has become the first city in America to ban 3D printed guns amid fears such bootleg firearms could fuel a surge in violent crime. Well, I just told you how to make one and where to get one because the right to make your own weapons is also part of the Second Amendment. Now, if you blow yourself up with it because you don't know what you're doing, do not blame me. Lawmakers of America's fifth biggest city passed a bill on Thursday, six months after the blueprint for the 3D gun known as the Liberator was made available online by the group Defense Distributed. So go look up Defense Distributed as a keyword when you download this, because obviously... Oh, and you can block it. Uh, download the information from a public library under a fake name, or make sure that you have some kind of encryption before you do this, because if you do it right, they will never know that you did it. Another way to do it is to find any place that you can use the internet without having to register. Download everything you need there and take it home with you. In May, the State Department demanded the design be taken offline on the basis that they could violate possible arms trafficking violations, but not before it was downloaded more than 100,000 times. And hopefully it's another 100,000, thanks to what I just did. It's all preemptive spokesman Steve Cobb, director of legislation for bill author Kenyatta Johnson, and told Philly Magazine, it's just based upon internet stuff out there. Droopy the dog. I know what, I know what you need to do. According to FBI crime statistics, Philly reported 331 murders in 2012, ranking it among the most violent cities in the U.S. While well, maybe there would have been less murders if more people would have had guns and been able to defend themselves. At least uh, in the sense that uh, there's a difference between murder and self-defense. The decision comes a week after the Liberator was deemed a serious safety threat and security concern after a gun printed by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms exploded before it was even fired. Let me let you know that if you do not know what you are doing, I have sent you to a site where you are going to blow yourself up, so maybe if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't do it. But it's not up to the government to decide. Um, the blueprints that can be produced on a 3D printer costing as little as $1,000 were seen as a breakthrough because no one has previously designed such a weapon that could withstand the pressure of firing modern ammunition. The Bureau re released the results of its test of the Liberator after posing a series of videos on YouTube, which Google must, have, you know, must not have ruined so much that they couldn't get it on. The weapon was found to have the power to penetrate several inches of flesh as well as a human skull. That's why you should own it. The bottom line is the penetration results demonstrated that the Liberator is a lethal weapon. Good, that's why you want it. You didn't want a rubber band shooter. Earl Griffith, chief of ATF's firearms technology brands, told the Huffington Post. Well, I just told you what you can do about it. Uh, it's printed on a plastic material called Visijet. Um, the gun rendered in a stronger plastic known as ABS shot eight rounds without any problems. So make sure you're using the stronger plastic. Um, and I think that's all I have to give you about how to do this here. You're just going to have to go and mess with it yourself. It's not picked up by metal detectors, but of course the bullets will be. Um, so there you go. I, I hope I have been a help to the Second Amendment and a thorn in Philly's side. Friends, it's all brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. If you're in Canton, Ohio, go and get the most delicious food that you've ever eaten, and that would be the food that you get at the Arcadia Grill. The other day I had the ravioli and cheese there. Oh, delicious. Mind-blowing. Uh, make sure you go to the bar. There's a full bar. They pour the drinks friendly. They are tasty. The Arcadia Grill, Court Avenue, Canton, Ohio. Friends, this is from Breitbart.com. 
exclusive Rand Paul says Americans are trading liberty for false security. And we all know that we were warned about this, I believe, from Thomas Jefferson and many people and throughout American history have warned of this very thing. And now another patriot, Rand Paul, is doing it. Um, before I get into this, uh, for those new viewers, what's my opinion on Rand? He's definitely not Ron. I like Judge Napolitano more. I like Gary Johnson more. I like Jim Gray more. However, I don't believe in voting for the lesser of two evils. So if Hillary ran against Romney, well, right, that's not going to happen, but you know what I mean. I would not vote for either one of those because I will not vote for what I believe is evil. However, I would vote for Rand if he ran against Hillary on two conditions. First of all, Hillary would have to be in danger of winning. Second of all, Judge Lapolitano would have to not be on the ballot because I don't see myself not voting for him as a main candidate. And the reason for that is I'm not compromising the lesser of two evils. I don't believe that Rand Paul is evil. I don't believe that he's going to be the kind of president that his dad could have been. But I think he would be worthy of getting my vote. That's one way to put it. He's made me mad about marijuana. He's made me mad about things he said about libertarians. He's made me mad about a number of things, but not to the level where I would consider him the kind of evil that I consider Hillary. Um, in the opening pages of Ray, Bad Ray Bradbury's famous novel Fahrenheit 451, protagonist Guy Montag uh, asks, wasn't there a time when firemen used to put out fires? They laugh at him, rebuke him, and say, everybody knows firemen start fires. Montag knew this. Montag's father and his grandfather, it says, had been firemen. It had been his duty for many years to start fires. He knew it was his duty to burn books, but this day would be different. Montag, it says, arrived on the scene to do his job, but found a woman who wouldn't leave. He, he complained that she had all of her books, but still wouldn't leave. Undeterred, Montag proceeds with the other firemen to douse the house, her books, and her with kerosene. The woman shouts out and goads him. She is indignant. That they torch, that that they would touch her books at all, and she still wouldn't leave. She says to him, "Play the man, Master Ridley. Today we will light such a candle by God's grace in England that it won't be forgotten." They keep dousing her with kerosene, and she says it again, "Play the man, Master Ridley. Today we will light such a candle." In the book, the reference is lost on the firemen who simply continue to do their job, which is always, of course, the uh, Nazi excuse. Just doing my orders. In the book, oh, I'm sorry, the reference is to a 16th century figure, Hugh Latimer, who literally became a human candle. He was burned at the stake in 1555 for heresy, opposing the state religion. He wanted to promote the idea that the Bible should be translated into English, which the state forbade because they wanted power. In America today, we're not yet burning people at the stake, fortunately, nor do we burn, nor are we burning books. But your government is interested in what books you read. They're interested in what you say in your phone calls. They're interested in what you write in your emails. As we, all have, as we now know from the National Security Agency revelations last summer, such government surveillance of citizens has been going on for quite a while now. In the summer of 2012, I asked for a report on the subject and was given a classified briefing. I wanted to know to what extent your privacy was being invaded, to what extent government was reading your emails, listening to your phone conversation without a judge's warrant. This is Rand. At the time, I couldn't tell you the answer because it was classified. What I could say, though, is that if the government says it's a few hundred incidents, it's actually closer to a gazillion incidents, which is a fictitious number. But it's a very large number, and it's one that is closer to the actual number of communications that are being looked at by the federal government on a daily, hourly, even minute-to-minute -minute basis. We have been too lax in giving up our privacy. We are trading our liberty for some sort of sensible and ostensible security. Look how we travel now. The personal privacy and dignity we've lost, something that the TSA might have reminded some Americans over Thanksgiving holiday. I'm going to read the rest of this. Harvard Law School professor Noah Feldman has asked, the next time airport security tells you to put your hands over your head and hold that vulnerable position for seven seconds, ask yourself, is that the posture of a free man? Good question. When, you give up our, when we give up our dignity and basic freedoms, that, and which are God-given freedoms, our basic freedoms that we have enjoyed as Americans, we give the terrorists the victory they most certainly don't deserve. 
we lose something too important to who we as a people are. Our liberties are slipping away from us. When Hugh Latimer said, let this be an episode that will not soon be forgotten, it became a human candle against tyranny and intolerance. Americans still have a torch that's burning. The Liberty Torch is burning brightly, figuratively or otherwise, in New York Harbor. We cannot continue to trade our freedoms for a false security. We can never let the flame of liberty go out. That, that my friends, that's an article. Senator Rand Paul, excellent job. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, Bud K, Bud K. Why? Find the perfect gift at Bud K. $10 or less, $20 or less, $50 or less, or over $50. It says, give them what they want. Quantities are severely limited. And um, let's see what you're getting here. Uh, you know anybody that likes a little bit of fantasy? The Orcus Sword and Thorin Oaken Shield from the movie The Hobbit. It's $174.99. You won't find that for under $200 anywhere. You know, do you, do you live in any place where you think you might need a stun gun? Do you live in a questionable neighborhood? Or you don't have to live in a questionable neighborhood anymore. You want to want to give a little treat to these little knockout game swines? Okay. Shock, shock light stun gun flashlight, $54.99. It's a flashlight. They mess with you. It's a taser. Zot! Play the knockout game now, jerk. Uh, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. And know that you're helping The Media Speaks when you do. A few more stories I want to get to. Christians are being burned alive, beheaded, crucified, tortured to death, and imprisoned. Uh, the Anthony Court recently showed me an article that uh, where some Christians were burning witches at the stake. I think it was Africa. I know what happens. Obviously, we got the Westboro Baptist idiots in our country. However, this is an ongoing, daily thing that is going on. And uh, as Michael Snyder points out here in The American Dream, this is really bad, dated December 10th. The coming persecutions of Christians has already begun. It is already here. So why is the mainstream media in the United States almost totally silent about this phenomenon? When some politician somewhere around the globe inadvertently offends homosexuals or Muslims, it instantly makes headline news. But very few Americans are even aware that it has been estimated that 100 million Christians are currently facing persecution and that approximately 100,000 Christians die for their faith each year. Now, if we were, if we were, if there was a country slaughtering 100,000 Muslims, you sure hear about it. Every time one faction of Islam attacks another, we hear about it. Um, we've gone to war to prevent genocides of 10,000 people. This is 100,000 Christians a year dying. It says, as you're about to see, Christians all over the world are being burned alive, beheaded, crucified, tortured to death, and imprisoned in metal shipping containers. I'm going to read you uh, some of these that are going on. Uh, not, not the whole story on all of them, but enough that you'll get the point. Christian taxi driver pulled out of his cab and beheaded in Egypt. Um, one attack involved a taxi driver, Rafat Aziz Mina, who was slaughtered in an Alexandria street just because he was Christian. In his early 20s, he was killed on the 16th of August by a mob of, mob of Islamists who took to the streets after news reached them about the military's action against the Caps in Cairo. Oh, yeah, yeah, and a cab driver had a lot to do with that. Um, two, tortured to death by U.S.-backed Al-Qaeda rebels in Syria. There's links to all this. In late October, the U.S.-supported opposition invaded and occupied Sadat for over a week till ousted by the, national, the nation's military. Among other atrocities, 45 Christians, including women and children, were killed, several tortured to death. So that 14 churches, some ancient, were ransacked and destroyed. The bodies of six people from one family, ranging from ages 16 to 90, were found at the bottom of a well. Slaughtering us like chickens in the Central Asia Republic, thousands of Christian civilians sought refuge in an airport guarded by French soldiers Friday. Fleeing from the mostly Muslim ex-rebels with machetes and guns who rule the country day after day in the worst violence, they hit the Coptic capital in nine months. Um, and don't forget, friends, you also have Muslims killing other Muslims. I'm not against Islam. I'm against idiots. The same way I'm against idiots like the Westboro Baptist Church that take a bad situation like the soldier's uh, death of a soldier and make it much worse. They are trash, too. So, I don't, want to, I don't want to be misquoted there. They are also trash. 
Four, shot for refusing to convert to Islam in Libya. You can say what you want to about Christians, but they don't normally shoot you if you don't convert. This is not the Crusades. A group of Muslims robbed two Egyptian Christians living in Libya and tied them up and shot them to death after the Coptic Christians refused their demand to convert to Islam, relatives said. 27 and 25, uh, they beat them horrendously and then shot them. Five! Head cut off in front of camera for converting to Christianity in Tunisia. A young man appears held down by a masked man, his head pulled back with a knife on his throat. He does not struggle and appears resigned to his fate. Speaking in Arabic, the background speaker or narrator chants a number of Muslim prayers and supplications mostly condemning Christianity, which because of the Trinity is referred to a polyistic faith. Um, this wonderful person said, Let Allah be avenged on the polytheist apostate. By the way, Christians do not believe that. We, re we believe in one God revealed in three parts. Uh, it's much like water, steam, and ice. It's still H2O. We believe in one God, so they're wrong there to begin with. Allah, empower your religion. Make it victorious against the polytheists. Allah, defeat the infidels in the hands of the Muslims. There is no good God but Allah and Muhammad his messenger. Then he cried, Allah Akbar, meaning God is greater, and to prove it, cut a man's head off. Um, again, I feel horrible for the, the, the Islamists that have to live around this, because this isn't what most Islamists want. They don't want this happening any more than most Christians want to be associated with aforementioned uh, Westboro. I'm going to zip through these. 50 Christians burned to death in a pastor's home in, in Nigeria. Um, seven, two brothers crucified for their faith in the Ivory Coast. One of them survived. Angry mob of about a thousand people destroy a church and beat the Christians in India. So I am not necessarily attacking uh, uh, people of Islam. This was done in India. Nine, suicide bombers kill 81 in a church in Pakistan. Ten, 80 lashes for drinking communion wine in Iran. Oh, we've done so much good in Iran. I'm so happy that, you know, we've, we've supported uh, so many sanctions against them. An Iranian court sentenced four Iranian men and 80 whiplash for 80 whiplashes for drinking wine during a communal and possession in satellite. And then I just... 11, uh, imprisoned in mental shipping containers in Eritrea. A representative of Open Doors, a charity that works with Christians under pressure for their faith, said that many Christian men and women are being held in underground dungeons, shipping containers, and military detention centers. They face exposure, hard labor, insufficient food, no water, and bad hygiene. And they are regularly denied medical treatment for malaria and pneumonia, which is contacted in prison. They get no diabetes medicine, no cancer medicine. They're just, you know, put in the hole and forgotten about. 12 publicly executed for owning a Bible in North Korea. If anybody thinks that I'm going after Islamists here, I believe there are Hindus in India. And I do not believe that there are not Islamists in mass droves in North Korea. Publicly executed, eight people, their heads covered with white bags, were tied to stakes at a local stadium in the city of Wonson before authorities shot them with a machine gun, according to the source. Once the authorities gathered the crowd of 10,000 people, including children, at Shinpung Stadium and forced them to watch the killings. It says, for the moment, like, for the moment, things like this are not happening in the U.S., but you would have to be extremely naive to think that it never could happen here. Animosity towards Christians is rapidly, rise, rapidly rising in our country. Anyone that spends much time cruising around the Internet can see that very clearly. In fact, some bloggers have suggested, and there is a link, that the castration and the murder of Christians should happen here in the U.S. It might seem easy to dismiss those remarks as the ramblings of a few deranged individuals, but the truth is that our government is now labeling Christians extremists and potential terrorists. And that matters, even if you hate Christians. Because they're going to do, they did it to Islamists already, peaceful Islamists in this country who I've got no problem with. Um, they're doing it to Christians. You mean to tell me you don't think they're going to do it to somebody else when they're done with the Christians like they were the Islamists? Do you really believe that? Do you atheists really believe that you're never going to be in the crosshairs? If you believe that, you're an idiot. For a large number of examples of this phenomenon, uh, please see the previous article. It's 72 types of Americans that are considered potential terrorists in government documents. Last two paragraphs. 
All over the planet, the persecution of Christians is growing, and our own government is now demonizing us and characterizing us as a threat. The years ahead are going to be very challenging for those who choose to be Christians. If you are a Christian, I hope that you are getting emotionally and spiritually prepared for that. Um, I want to go to this, naturalnews.com, cell phone radiation, breast cancer, link. A new study raises grave concerns. I forget my cell phone everywhere I go because I don't put it in my pocket. Why? Because I want to keep it away from the family jewels, because I don't want them all cancer-ridden. I don't hold my phone to my head. I put people on speakerphone. If they don't like it, you don't have to call me. I'm not getting cancer to talk to you. A new study raises concern of a possible association between cell phone radiation exposure and breast cancer in young women. The research team led by Dr. Lisa Bailey, a former president of the American Cancer Society's California Division and one of California's top breast surgeons, studied four young women aged from 21 to 32 years old with multifocal invasive breast cancer. The researchers observed that all of the patients developed tumors in the areas of their breasts next to which they carry their cell phones, often up, to ten, often up to 10 hours a day for several years. Do not carry your cell phone near your tatas. It is a bra, it is not a pocket. None of the patients had a family history of breast, breast cancer, and they all tested negative for BRCA1 and BRCA2. Breast cancer genes are linked to about one half of breast cancer cases, cases, and there are no other known risks for breast cancer. Imaging the young girl's breast revealed a clustering of multiple tumor foci in the part of the breast directly under where their cell phones touch their body. Tiffany France, one of the young girls involved in the study, said that she had no idea of the risks involved to let her watch the correct views. I put my cell phone right in my bra, said Miss France in a TV interview that also won an Emmy. However, her mother Tracy Franz immediately made the connection right after Tiffany developed breast cancer at only 21. We never took it seriously until after she was diagnosed. Never took it seriously. Therefore, other people had at least warned the mother, like I am warning you now, and she didn't listen. So they were not completely in the dark. Just like after hearing this, neither are you. Her tumors were exactly where her cell phone had been kept in her bra for about six years. No one ever told us that this was a very bad idea. The Tracy Franz said, uh, surgeons had to remove part of her breast. Her family had no genetic or other risk factors, so when they come out with the vaccine, don't fall for it. Dangers of other EMF exposures. Cell phones emit a form of electrical magnetic, magnetic field, it's called EMF, called a radio frequency radiation. This radiation exposure has previously been linked to brain tumors, cancer, cardiovascular disease, that's heart disease for you Kesha fans, depression, and other serious illnesses. Studies show that the other EMF exposures are similar, supposedly harmless, everyday appliances and devices. They are, in fact, dangerous. The study published Bioinitiative Report 2012 concluded, quote, there is a sufficient evidence from in vitro and animal studies from human biomarker studies, from occupational and light night studies, and a single longitudinal study with appropriate collection of urine samples to conclude that high MF magnetic field exposure may be a risk factor for breast cancer. The report's authors went on to say there is rather strong evidence for case control studies that long-term high exposure over 100 milligrams of ELF, electro-low frequency magnetic field, is a risk for breast cancer. So when you see the EMF standards, remember they are outdated and they are wrong. I just read you, save the tatas! Uh, KRDO.com, last thing I'm going to get to. Uh, I'm starting something new. I have the dust cap of the month, and I get a whole bunch of these dumb stories, and I like to do six stories at a time, but I end up, or when it's time to do the dust cap of the month every month, I end up with more than six stories. So now, there will be the dust cap of the day. I, uh, these are ones that I, uh, don't, I'm not going to be giving the dust cap of the month award to, but it does highlight how stupid our country is. Child psychologist, six-year-old boy kissing a girl is normal behavior. Colorado Schools, Colorado, a Cannon City School six-year-old boy has been accused of sexual harassment and the school suspended him for kissing a girl on the cheek and hand. This happened every day when I was six years old. 
A child psychologist said that the tough treatment could have negative consequences. She said the kissing is normal behavior for children of that age. You shouldn't need a psychologist to tell you that. The Lincoln School of Science and Technology is home to young growing minds from kindergarten to fifth grade. Six-year-old Hunter Yelton is one of them, suspended two days for kissing a girl once on the hand and the other time on the cheek. Ron Paul does do homeschooling. Classes, uh, you can look it up at the Ron Paul Institute. Sandy Wurtlell, W-U-R-T-E-L-E, a child clinical psychologist at UCSS specializes in child sexual development and the prevention of childhood sexual abuse. She said she wasn't surprised when we told her about Hunter kissing a classmate. No, because it's normal. What is it normal is him getting in trouble for it. At least this much trouble. For most six-year-old boys, absolutely this is normal behavior, said Wordle. However, she was surprised to hear of the school suspension of it. And that really gives mixed messages. Negative messages to the kids, she said. This part of development is just, an, just as important, if not more important, than their academic subjects. God bless her. Wartel believes the term sexual harassment could have serious consequences for the child. I don't think a six-year-old can understand what harassment is, says Wordle. There are some long-term implications. I'm sure you could explain uh, inappropriate kissing to a child. I think uh, psychologists always go a little overboard, but she has a point. She said, if anything, it's an opportunity to talk. For so long, we've been like, oh no, don't kiss, don't talk about it, don't ask questions, she said. Wordle said it's also a chance to have the discussion with Hunter, the girl involved, their classmates, and the parents. Ridiculous! Move away from we don't do this in a situation to when is it acceptable. That makes sense. Guys, it says it points to the fact that some behavior may be acceptable in one place and isn't acceptable in another. No shit. You may have different rules for showing affection than you do maybe at home, said Wordle. Wordle assured News Channel 13 that children at that age are simply curious about the differences between boys and girls. In other words, it is healthy, it is supposed to be, and to try to stop it is the height of stupidity. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. If you're stuck here on my live cam, I post the entire show on uh, my channel, so go to uh, the youtube.com slash The Correct Views. You'll be seeing this in high def uh, probably within uh, 12 to 15 hours of right now. Um, let me say also um, that go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Amazing work being chucked out all the time for you. Please donate to this show if you can, which is brought to you by Bud K. and the Arcadia Grill. Uh, you can do so at, the hot, at Hotmail.com slash The Correct Views. Good night, friends. God bless. And screw Google because they screw us.